As an atheist parent, would it be child abuse in a way raising your child as I am, an atheist, I in a highly Christian society? Well, what, I tell you what I think is the best thing to do is to, is to raise your children in the knowledge that, that, exi that religion exists and is a real phenomenon in the world. But I think, it, I think they should be taught that there are lots of different religions and the children will work out for themselves that if there are lots of different religions, they can't all be right. Uh, but I think what would be uh, just as bad as telling a child, you are a Catholic child, would be to tell a child, you are an atheist child. Um, that's something for the child itself, himself or herself, to decide. Uh, and uh, I think it's just the same kind of labeling. Children, are, children who are too young to know their philosophical opinion should no more be called an atheist or a Christian child than you would call them a Marxist child or a monetarist child. Uh, you know, your, your, your kind of book has helped and empowered me as an educator uh, to, to, and I think all of us should, is be not so afraid to speak out. In America, I don't know what they say in England, when people sneeze here, they always say, bless you or God bless you. And I usually use that as an introduction to say, it won't help, viruses are atheists and so am I. And then very often, that will start a conversation in which people will inevitably kind of quickly say, but you must believe in something, Dr. Marx. And then I say, yes, I do, the truth. And um, that's kind of helpful. You can use yeah. that. I, I, it works for me. I don't know what they say in England yes. when you sneeze. Yes. Um, I mean, I, that, that seems to me to be a perfectly good example of consciousness raising. Uh, I think it would be pompous to object to anybody saying, bless you, when, when they sneeze. Uh, but um, to just to draw attention to it and, start, and use it to start a conversation uh, seems to me to be a, a very good example of consciousness raising. You reference Einstein and Sagan. Both Where of, are you, please? Where yeah, are I'm right here. Right. Both of who said they believed in the god of Spinoza. Uh, can you go that far? Well... I know that's a tough I, I think... I think I can because my understanding of the God of Spinoza is that he doesn't do anything and actually doesn't really exist. Um, so, uh, and I don't think Einstein thought that there was any intelligence that existed, any intelligent entity that existed. So uh, I'm pretty sure that I agree with, with what Einstein said, so I'd better. Um, uh, um, but I, I'm, I'm not quite sure whether, it, whether, it was, whether Einstein was right to say that he, that he was that he believed in Spinoza's God, because I ne never quite understood whether Spinoza's God was really there or not. Somewhat related to an earlier question, you made the statement that if all the evidence supported creationism, you would immediately accept creationism. Would you like to speculate strictly in imagination as to what evidence there might be that would, what evidence could be imagined that would support creationism? Uh, it would be very difficult to, um, uh, to imagine evidence that would support creationism. I suppose, uh, well, I suppose one thing is that, is that God could reveal himself and, uh, and actually tell us. What would he reveal? Um, well, I mean, uh, once he'd established his credentials, uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I think it wouldn't be beyond the wish of God to find a way to establish his, his credentials, if he existed. Um, I suppose that um, a genuine example of uh, a fossil, no, well, even a fossil right out of place, like Haldane's fossil rabbits in the Precambrian, uh, well, if, if, if such a thing were found, I would first of all say it's a hoax, and then if it, somehow it could be uh, prove that it wasn't a hoax, there really, really were r rabbits living in the Precambrian, then I would start thinking in terms of uh, an alternative evolution from another planet or something landing in... Some, I'd start talking about panspermia. Um, it would be very, very, very hard, as, the, as you imply in your question, to actually think of what possible evidence there could be. Um, I... well... I mean, it, it, it would certainly be a great help to that case if 
the creationists could do what they're always trying to do, which is to, to discredit the ev evidence for evolution. So, for example, if you look at the distribution of DNA codes around the animal and plant kingdoms, which at present follow a perfect hierarchy, um, increasingly wide bracketing of cousinship, it all fits. If you do it for one molecule, you get one tree. If you do it for another molecule, you get the same tree. Another molecule, you get the same tree. I suppose if every molecule gave you a different tree, um, that would be... Well, I mean, you could still come up with a different model of evolution that, that, that explained it. Um, if, the di if the geographic distribution of animals, such as we see here on the Galapagos, was exactly wrong, if, if instead of showing the pattern that it does, which is that um, the animals here are clearly derived from the South American mainland, but they've had time to, to change, and on different islands they've had time to change again, um, and the more remote islands have slightly more distant um, things. If, it, if everything like that went wrong, uh, and if, if, say, small islands, say, say if, if the Galapagos fauna was exactly the same as the Hawaiian fauna, um, but different from, um, from any mainland or something, I guess if you piled up masses and masses of evidence, you'd conclude that evolution probably isn't true. But even that wouldn't say that God did it. Um, you'd, it would still be a, a huge leap from that to say that God did it, because um, as many people have argued, including me, you're still left with a massive stumbling block of explaining where, where God came from. Uh, I really enjoyed an interview I saw you do where you pointed out to an interviewer that he also was not an atheist where Zeus and Poseidon and those guys were concerned um, and it was simply a matter of which ones you decided to accept and which ones you decided to reject and those ones you would also be an atheist for. Um, we all giggle nowadays when you suggest uh, Zeus and Poseidon and, and Aphrodite. Do you envision a time when the Judeo-Christian construct might be just as obsolete and something else would take its place? God willing, yes. <laughs> um, uh, by the way, um, uh, Sam Harris is also very fond of using uh, Poseidon as an example, and he, and he said that nobody nowadays believes in Poseidon. Um, he then got several irate letters from yes. devout <laughs> Poseidon worshippers, yes. <laughs> Referring to the question about the God gene, and it's impossible for me to see that there is such a thing as an actual God gene, but I believe that the human genome itself is responsible for God in the sense that when our species developed to the point where we had sufficient intelligence to ask the question about how we got to be here and how this came about, we didn't have the knowledge to give a meaningful answer. We had to make it up at that stage. And I think the inevitable result was religion and a concept of God. And to me, all that can be summarized in a very brief mathematical equation, which simply says intelligence times ignorance equals God. Do you believe that religion was inevitable in the course of the evolution of our species? I think inevitable is a strong word to use. Uh, religion certainly has arisen independently, or, or maybe not independently, but in all cultures that we know of. And so, in that case, you might say it's inevitable in the same sense as, say, heterosexual lust was. Uh, we don't all have it, but, but, um, we, but we know what it is, and we all come from a culture which, which has it. Um, so I wouldn't want to use the word inevitable. I, although it's very easy to say, and I say it, that uh, before we had scientific knowledge, there was no other recourse to the human questioning than to say there must be a god. Um, yet when you actually think that argument through, it's a thoroughly bad argument. Um, you, you, I mean, the, the, the way to put this would be to say, as I did at the beginning of The Selfish Gene, I think, uh, before Darwin, everybody had to be an atheist. Um, and and in, I think in a sense that's, that's right, but yet, even without Darwin, even without a perfectly good explanation as Darwin's given us for why we all exist, the, the explanation that says God did it is, is a terrible explanation. It doesn't work. It's, a, it's, it's incoherent. And therefore, even without Darwin, 
um, a really intelligent person should not have been a theist. Darwin made it a hell of a lot easier to be an atheist. But I, I think, logically speaking, we didn't actually need Darwin in order to be atheist. But most of us are fallible. And the pre-Darwinian atheists, such as Hume, would have had, uh, he'd have been co confident in, in his logical rightness, but he must have worried about wh where all this organization and elegance and beauty came from. He would have been hugely relieved had he lived long enough to read The Origin of Species.